All right, so here's a typical setup how I start a tattoo. Uh, just regular setup, what I will do every, every, every single day. It's not anything special. I uh, always have a setup for a liner, which is a five liner. Then I have a nine shader, and then I use a 15 Magnum curved. Uh, set up tons of color caps and I set up the last throw almost a third of the color caps are filled with distilled water So that if I want to mix some stuff around I can do it or I use mixing solutions or shading solutions depends what I try to break it with um, Razor Some Vaseline or A&D ointment and a cup of water and that's all we need and a good barrier So let's see how it goes Demo of my lead. I don't know okay, I just used that because we worked on the computer right. and we basically started working on it and adding it out. Okay, so we made track lines. So we're gonna see where we put the, the stencil down. Um, so we have a proper placement. We made some cuts on the stencil so it has a chance to fold around like this that it gives it a little bit. It's always difficult to get a stencil on like that. But that's basically it. Some raw amber, some mocha, rubber doll, some bright sunshine, ruby red, sangria, Mario's light blue, Bahama blue, bright red, lavender, golden yellow, Mario's blue, lining red, magic color. You can never have enough white. So basic setup, we have tons of color caps. I like to have all my colors out first. So I have to take as little breaks as possible. A lot of white, yellows, reds, browns for this uh, specific piece. Some gray and a couple little empty cups still so we can uh, add some other colors together. And then we mix them up as we get along. Okay, so I like the line with the gray wash light. Uh, it gives me some room and that just like really grays over the skin. I don't go too deep. So this gives us a chance that it's, um, we have the line work done, but it's not really solid line. So we can shade it and like structure it later on. Um, I only line what I want to currently work on. So I want to work on the bottom of the piece that I don't irritate this too much. So I start working here and then start shading here right away as well. And uh, I can't even go that far that I'm going to like coloring right, right away as well. Yeah, uh, stretching is, for my consideration, one of the most vital parts of a good tattoo because if you don't stretch correct, the needle doesn't keep the same depth, it keeps going in and out because the skin bounces a little bit where um, the needle goes. So if you don't stretch consistently, then you have an effect that goes like this and it bounces and your needle goes in like halfway, a little bit, a little up, real down, it gives you spots. Uh, so, and a lot of new tattoo artists are just not like trained enough yet to stretch constantly because it just tires out your, your wrist and your hands. So in this case, we switch a little. We're going into the lining red, and I just start lining the inside of the shield. I use the lining red so it's like, it's a thinner pigment. It's easier to line. As the color is more concentrated and more uh, compact and maybe too thick to really uh, lay it in as a line, as smooth, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't go as long, you would have to go only piece by piece by piece. 
and we want to try to get this in as fast as possible. I even have the habit, what I do right now is because it's such a tricky line to pull a circle that I make it even a little thinner with the mixing solution. So it's a little bit faster for me. some ombre, put it in some mixing solution, break it down, and start shading it out. Also try to be very consistent, don't do this, it doesn't work, just go make small tight circles, and go on there. Shade it out. These colors are made to blend, so they're not made to just like spit shade. Take your time. shade and then the next step I do is to take the golden yellow and I add some white to it and use it with the mixing solution and that gives it that strong blend Uh, I don't like to have any empty areas in the tattoo, so every empty skin should be covered. And if it looks white, like the head of the eagle, then we're gonna make it solid white. So you just have to be careful when you do it this way, with the magnum, that it don't cut the people. So you have to be very fast in and out. You can't keep it running. I mean, a common mistake would now be that the people want to speed up at that moment, you know, mm -hmm. and try to get it like, like try to get it done, you know. But it takes some time to really get it done, and then also the people keep rubbing with the paper towel, with a dry paper towel on the piece, you know. I mean, when you look at it, there's no blood in it. There's no like almost no redness, you know. I mean, we're using the intense paint, so it cools it down, but. It's still like, you know, it's just of people overworking it sometimes now in this moment, you know? Especially when you go and do stuff what we're doing right now, like layering on top a darker color, you know? A lot of mistakes I made here, but just like not being patient and go in and overwork the skin, you know? But it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very fine line because this is what's gonna make the, the tattoo look more three-dimensional. Like, you know, you, you always have to assume that you maybe have to put another layer on top of it, like another one, you know? So at that time, people just like nailing it in and, and overworking the skin or pushing it to the limit and then when they have to put another layer on top it's a done deal you know skin breaks and then it starts to get inflamed so and I use a lot on the on the 15 like in every single angle I turn my machine you know I go like up down
Like I know already, I want it a little bit more strong and the blue here. So I just let it sit for a little bit. That I know that I can shade on top of it later on. The paper towel wet as well because that it doesn't smear the colors together, you know. If you dry wrap it, you wrap it into an open wound and it stays there. This is currently like a medium gray. So, you try to work the hair with a little nine round, and we try to be very consistent with it, but still make it look like it's strings of hair instead of just a solid area. Another thing where a lot of people get really impatient and start just rushing through the whole principle. And only hit it once, you don't have to hit it like two or three times. Last thoughts is like do the wipe at the end, the highlights are really important. And then we finish it with the five rounds, what I started with. I'll make it really, really detailed. And then we should have everything done, so it shouldn't take too long anymore.